Everyone, hey, it's Nate here with Outside Cleaners. I'm on Cape Cod, Massachusetts, where I am frustrated. <laughs> it's not the end of the world, not a huge deal in the scheme of things, but in this moment, I'm frustrated because um, I've lost a job and I've got a would-be customer who's not happy with me. And I don't like either of those two things. So I'm making this video to share with you uh, what's happened and the lesson that I've learned from this situation. What I'm really hoping is that other, you know, exterior cleaners out there, other service providers can see this and maybe somebody will learn the lesson the easy way instead of the hard way as I just have. Um, so here's what's happened. Back in June, and as I make this video, it's the end of August, Back in June, a local homeowner expressed interest in having their roof cleaned. Great. I set up a time to meet him. We walk around his house together. I look at the roof. Yep, I can clean it, no problem. Only issue is I can't get there right away. By that point, my summer was basically booked. He said, oh, great, no problem. Uh, autumn would be fine. Perfect. So uh, what I did was I got back home, got on our quoting program, um, I, I wrote up a work proposal to him. It's like a page and a half of, you know, explanation of what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it and blah, blah, blah. I sent it to him through our quoting program so that he would receive it on email. Uh, I did get a notification that he received the, the proposal that I sent him. He received it and he opened it. Okay. At that point, it's in his hands. I'm, it's not my policy to, you know, follow up or hound prospects or try to strong arm them into, you know, the deal. Once I know they have my information, it's in their lap and they can hire me or they can shop around whatever they want to do. That's just the way I like to do business. So, um, I didn't hear back from them for quite a while and that, that happens. Um, but then out of the blue in early August, I got a note saying that he accepted the job. Again, that's through the, the quoting program. Great, so he had clicked on accept. He wanted me to do the work again this autumn, September, October. His only question was, hey, when, when am I gonna do it? So when I received that note on email, I emailed back saying, hey, thanks for your business. Um, you know, this work is a little weather dependent, so the date might change, but let's aim for the first week in September. And and I had, I think I penciled it for like September 4th or something like that. And I sent that to him by regular email, not through our customer management system quoting tool, just through regular email, I send that to him. So today, here we are, uh, end of August, I called him up and I said, hey, you know, Nate with Outside Cleaners, remember me? You know, we've arranged to clean your roof this autumn. And nope, zip. It was uh, a very unwelcome call for him. He said he never heard back from me. He was very unhappy. So uh, he got somebody else. Basically, shut up, Nate, get off the phone. And I was, you know, I was surprised, I was confused and uh, frustrated for both of us because first of all, you know, I've put in time and effort to communicate and to follow through and all this. And as a customer, he's for some reason thinking I never got back to him or never, you know, acknowledged his acceptance of my work proposal. I never, you know, got back to him with a date or anything like that. And that's maddening for me because that's not the customer experience that I want our customers to have. Um, it's not clear to me what went wrong. You know, I, I after I got off the phone with him, I looked up in my email and I, I see, no, I, I got back to him the same day he accepted. I got back to him that night and said, hey, thanks for your business. You know, here's the, the date and all that stuff. I don't know where that ball was dropped. I don't know if my email is, you know, sitting unopened in his email. I don't know if it, if I sent it to a, an address that he has since changed. I don't know, you know, I don't know where the, the communication was missed. I know I emailed him. 
Here's the lesson I've learned. I just assume that he got my email. I just assume that he got my email. I just assume that he had it. I think going forward, I am gonna follow up with people until I, I get confirmation that they have received this type of information. Again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hound customers who are debating or thinking about having work done. Once I know they have my proposal, that's it. But in this, you know, follow up situation, if, if I've sent information, you know, regarding a, a, a work date or now that I'm thinking about it, even a, a, a date change, you know, Hey, you know, I'm sick or it's bad weather or something like that. I've always just emailed people and, and assumed that they get it. But here in this situation, obviously, obviously that's not the case. So, you know, all this tech is great when it works. And, you know, by tech, I mean emails and voicemails and stuff. But, you know, just the human element of making sure they receive it, making sure they acknowledge that they've received it. That's what I need to do better at as this situation shows. So, uh, again, yeah, I hate spinning my wheels. I really hate when a would-be customer thinks that I've ghosted them or dropped the ball or not followed through because I bend over backwards to not do that. 